Thanks for having me. Thanks for the invitation to be here. Uh, my name is Vincent, and I think I grew up uh, I'm Chinese, but I was born in Fairfax County. And uh, I grew up, I, half my life I grew up like a lot of, you know, traditional Chinese families, which is, you know, go to school, get good grades, get a good career, and, um, you know, a, like a, there was like a lawyer, doctor um, type of professions. And uh, I reluctantly went to school, to be honest. Uh, I actually, my father had a really bad gambling problem from when I was born to about five years old. And he got in so much trouble that my mom actually didn't want me to have anything to do with him and then moved me to the Bahamas. And I lived in the Bahamas for you know second, third, fourth, fifth, and half of sixth grade. And the schooling system was so bad that my mom had to send me back, but because she wasn't paying taxes, I had to live with an uncle. And uh, we weren't paying taxes, I had to go to private school. And finally, when I had accrued enough time, he had accrued enough time that I could go to public school, I went from private school back to the public school system. So school was really tough for me growing up just because of the Bahamian system, going back to the US system and going from a private um, school system to a public school system and then right after that going. So I never really did well in school. But throughout this entire time, my mom stayed in the Bahamas and let, made me move with my uncle who was living in Fairfax County. And the whole time I was going up there, it was a traditional like, hey, get good grades, get a good career. And um, I remember even telling him that at, after high school, I'm not gonna go to college. And he just laughed at me and he says, no, you're going to college. So I ended up going and, um, and he kind of dictated what I was supposed to do. He asked me to go into finance. I did horrible in finance, so he says, just do computers then. So I did computers for like the last, I think two years of school, got out and got my first job and just didn't, I just didn't feel right there. So I started to raise chameleons, um, the lizards, <laughs> right? The, I started to breed, I, got, I had a male chameleon and I, and I got him a girlfriend and I, I bred the two chameleons and I had 20 eggs. But when I saw that, I saw each egg was worth $350 and if I could sell the dry goods, like the cage, the lighting and everything, the order size would be 750 and I multiplied the math. And then I started to, <laughs> I bought more males and female um, pairs and I started just, I, I remember I was living in my cousin's basement and I had to fill that out. But even at that start, I bred enough chameleons to buy a house. And then from when I bought a house, I was able to buy every single toy that I wanted to play with. And uh, I kind of plateaued. I mean, I made, I made more money than I was making as a full-time software engineer to where I was able to just like say, I don't want to work anymore, I want to do chameleons. But then I had plateaued. Like I, I remember I even telling my uncle, I was like, hey, I want, like when I was in my cousin's basement doing this, I was like, hey, I got a plan, I'm going to do chameleons full-time. And he just, just like when he told me to go to school, he's like, look, I get it, you have a hobby, but focus on your, your career now. At first I was focusing on school, and I focused on career. So there was a lot of pushback from the family. And, uh, you know, I just, I did it anyways. I didn't really tell him, I didn't have his blessing with it until I was able to, he kind of saw like, oh, now you have your own house. So you kind of made that first step in your life where you have a home. Um, and, but I hit this plateau where it was more of a lifestyle business. And with a lifestyle business, it was like, it was cool that I didn't have to go to work anymore, but I was really working a full-time job. I was just working for myself. And then I got into international exporting. I started exporting to Europe um, and Asia and Canada. And, uh, but it was just this plateau and I was like, hey, I'm doing this, I'm working really hard. And I read this book called The E-Myth and The E-Myth said that you didn't create, a you didn't start your own business, you started your own job. And I started to realize that I really, like Dana, if, if I didn't work and I wasn't selling these things, we're gonna die. And I hadn't, take a I hadn't taken any vacation, I was working like, seven days a week and um, I said all right I'm gonna pivot I'm gonna do something else now and I knew how to program because I went to I was I was I was uh, I had a job as a programmer and I I created this dinky help desk app and help desk is basically a ticketing system for when your computer breaks you open a ticket then you close a ticket the problem was when I went to market it was saturated I had every single there was like a hundred competitors out there doing it so I at that point I was at another turning point where I could have given up and figured something else out. But what I did was um, I learned how to sell chameleons really good online. That's how we got a presence is just online marketing, SEO, SEM, driving traffic to the site. Like if you couldn't shop for a chameleon without stumbling upon our brand at one point. So I used what I learned from marketing and I said, let me just buy generic or optimize for generic keywords like service management software, repair tracking software, maintenance ma um, tracking software, and drive it all to this like homepage that uh, you know sold my software and it started to work, but it wasn't for IT, it wasn't a help desk. I got, my first customer was a carpet cleaner, and then my second customer was a guy that excavated, dug holes, and I was like, all right, if I can get this to work for two guys like this, I can probably go all in on home services or service businesses and just ignore IT because it's too saturated, because nobody was building software for carpet cleaners, HVAC guys, electricians, people that paint curbs, houses, and everything. 
So I rebranded everything um, and uh, kept the name. The M actually didn't mean anything at the time because every other letter was taken. <laughs> so it, it just went through a, a, B, C, D, E, and finally it landed on M. And then like people used to ask what the M is. But fortunately now we tell them it's M for mobile, mobile help desk, which is exactly what the product is. So we were lucky on that end and uh, started to build up this traffic and you know getting them on the on the on the landing page. Part of my my change from going to chameleons was like the confidence that I said, if I can sell a chameleon, I can sell anything. And I had learned, I had read every single book on selling. I mean, like Zig Ziglar, um, Chet Holmes, every author that was out there, and started reading even like uh, you know predictable revenue. Every single book that was on selling, I learned how to sell. And uh, instead of waiting for the sales to fall into my lap, I actually went out there, picked up the phone, and I started calling people to sell them. And then you know that book E Myth that I that I was reading also said that if you got to scale, which means you can't do it, you're still doing your job. So. Um, you know, part of the whole thing was I hired a co-founder to help me build and then I started to hire, I hired my first sales rep to replicate what I was doing and part of the whole book was like you got to create training materials, you got to train, 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 train. So one sales rep turned into two, four, six and then finally, um, you know, we it grew out from my living room then we had to get like real office space, a free office space which is an incubator over at um, Fishbowl Labs. I think we grew it to about 20 people there and then finally had to get a real office and today we're about like um, 80 or so in office, 20 offshore. Every day, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to read these fairy tales about like guys starting these tech businesses in their like garages or whatever. I did it in my living room and then just selling it for like millions and millions of dollars. And, um, you know, I look back, it's like, I was always wanted that like fairy tale story and um, I've just been really grateful. And that's where I'm at today. So I'm still with M Help Desk. Uh, I got the logistics and everything on the inside, I just have to do it for two more years. and. And I don't know what's going to happen after two years. Maybe I'll keep working. Maybe not. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, me.